Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a privilege and honor to welcome our 2022 Masters champion, Scotty Scheffler. Scotty, you arrived to Augusta this week as the number one player in the world, an honor you earned just two weeks ago. Your play leading into the Masters this week makes it no surprise that you leave here with your first green jacket. Tell us how it feels. <laughs> it feels pretty good. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what to say, to be honest with you guys. Um, I'm just really thankful to be in this position. <sighs> um, you know, I, I didn't get to the press room in my dreams, so I don't, you guys are going to have to ask me some questions. <laughs> Great. Well, you post the scores of 69, 67, 71, and 71, the only player in the field to play under par in each round this week and befitting the number one player in the world. You took the lead on Friday afternoon, and you never relinquished it. Congratulations on a spectacular week to earn your first Masters victory. Questions? Okay. Here. Scotty, what has, um, what has Ted meant to you through this journey, and what has Ted meant to you through this week yeah I mean Ted through this journey he's he's only worked for me now for I don't even know how many events like maybe nine or ten um, he's doing pretty good <laughs> <laughs> um, you know I, I can't I can't speak highly enough of Ted as a person and as a caddy he is I respect him so much just as a person you know he's such a fun guy to be around he's a man of faith and you know I, I love him and you know I, I can't I, I can't say enough about him. I mean, you know, the qualities you look for in a person, you know, Ted embodies pretty much all of them. You know, he's he's humble, he's hardworking, he's honest. He's, he's a good time to be around. I mean, he's just, he's an amazing guy, and to, you know, be able to have him on the bag is, is so special. Well, you had played here before. So with him on, this, on, on your bag this week, were there insights that you hadn't known about this place before? You know, I think... I think we just did such a good job of being really committed to what we were doing. Um, and, you know, that goes through all 72 holes. Just whatever we were trying to do, I knew, I knew exactly where I wanted to put the ball. And if I was to miss it, which side of the golf course I could be on to where I could still get it up and down. And, I mean, I chipped it so good this week. And so we, we did such a good job of putting myself in positions to where we could still manage, even when I wasn't swinging my best at times. Um, and, you know, I mean, he just knows his golf course so well, and he's just I, – I trust him so much on the golf course. All right. Dan. Yeah, um, you mentioned uh, winning this in your dreams and how you dreamed it. I I'm wondering if you ever dreamed that you would kind of take the lead on Friday and just sort of uh, a little bit run away with it. You never, you never had that – I imagine you dreamed of, you know, hitting some big putt or, or one shot that, that – in that back nine, but nobody really got that much close to you. Did you ever envision winning it in this this manner, where you just sort of dominated the last three days? I mean, I think I think the only thing I imagined was probably that walk up 18. I've seen some guys do that. I, you know, the first one that comes to mind is watching Jordan make that walk up 18 with a huge lead, and definitely throughout the the round today when I built up a little bit of a lead. You know, I didn't want any stress towards the end of the day, and I didn't break my concentration until we got onto the green on 18. Once we got onto the green, I was like, all right, I'm going to enjoy this. And then, you know, um, had some fun with it. And um, yeah, I don't, I really don't know what to say. It was, it was definitely nice to build up a lead and um, not nothing safe out there on the back nine on this golf course. You know, I, I've heard all the things that everybody says, it doesn't start till the back nine on Sunday, anything can happen. Don't hit it in the water on 12, you know, all, all the stuff. Um, and, you know, I just, Blocked most of that out and just tried to execute and hit good golf shots. Jeffrey. Scotty, what did you see as your biggest strength this week? And secondly, Randy commented the other day that you loved the big stage. Is that kind of the athlete inside you? I guess so. You know, it's fun being in contention. Um, I, I enjoyed yesterday and today on the golf course thoroughly. Um, off the golf course, it's much more difficult. You know, once I get out here on property, it's it's fantastic. It's so much fun. But trying to sleep at night and, you know, the slow mornings and the stress, it's it's a long week. And playing with the lead is not easy, especially at a golf tournament like this where, you know, if, if 
if you probably took a straw poll of the guys on tour, who would, what golf tournament they would want to win, it'd be the Masters. And so, major championship golf. I mean, you could. There's so many reasons. And um, off the golf course, it's stressful. On the golf course, it's a heck of a lot of fun. So, um, and your biggest strength this week? I think I just stayed patient and trusted myself. You know, I. I had a lot of nice up and downs too. If I was to pick one part of my uh, game that excelled the most, I would say it was probably my, my wet lob wedge. You know, I even today I had some really good up and downs at the beginning of the round, and then, you know, I just kept myself in position. Patrick, Scotty, hi there. Um, many congratulations and thank you very much for your time. Um, so eight weeks ago today, you have your first PGA Tour victory. You now have four wins in your last six starts. Could you ever have imagined back then how this was all going to play out? And other than due to the fact you play great golf, did you ever see this coming? What do you put it down to? I would say no to both of those. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been a guy that likes to look too far into the future. And so for me, just staying present is, has always been what works best for me. And so... Even when I'd get asked the questions, you know, when are you going to get your first win? When are you going to do this? All, you know, all, all those different types of things that you get asked in rooms like this. And um, the only time I really thought about it was, was then. And so for me, I just, I'm doing my best to just stay present and just enjoy the moment. And, and that's what I did most of today. And, um, you know, I just I really don't know what to say. Just a quick follow-up. You're a Masters champion now. That means you get to come back here for life. Just let that sink in for a few seconds. How does that feel? How do you compute to that? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the coolest part about this whole deal. I mean, this is such a fun golf course. It's such a fun piece of tools it gets. It's so fun to play. Um, you know, I just can't, can't believe that I can come back for a lifetime and, and get to enjoy, enjoy this golf course. Adam. Scotty, how pivotal do you think the chip-in was at the third hole? I would say what is most pivotal was getting that ball up and down. Um, to have it go in was obviously, you know, off the charts. But my main goal was just to get up and down and have it see you go in was, was definitely special. And then um, parring four and five was huge as well. And then after that, I kind of just started cruising. Um, I felt comfortable with pretty much most of the aspects of my game. You know, my swing maybe felt a little bit off. But other than that, you know, I felt like... I was, wasn't ever really going to make a bogey, um, and that was my goal. I just tried to hit good shots, and that was really all I was thinking about. And how much, sorry, how much did the uh, growing up in the shadow of so many PGA Tour players at Royal Oak shape your interest in wanting to be a golf pro? Yeah, I mean, I grew up around so many guys out there just watching them and, and learning from them. And, you know, I wore pants when I was a kid at Royal Oaks because I wanted to play golf in the PGA Tour. I mean, I would wear pants and a collared shirt to, like, third grade class and <laughs> get made fun of. <laughs> Rightfully so. <laughs> um, you know, I just – I always wanted to be out here, and I never expected it. I never um, – you know, I never expected to be sitting where I am now. I – you know, you don't expect things to come to you in this life. You just do the best that you can and um, with the hand you're dealt and just go from there. Um, I never really thought I was that, that good at golf, so I just kept practicing and kept working hard, and um, yeah, that's just what I'm going to keep doing. Dylan. Scotty, how did you uh, handle the late tea time today? What did you do uh, last night? What did you do this morning? And how many episodes of The Office did you watch? <laughs> You know, last night was pretty easy. I was tired. Um, we went and got some food. I spilled my dinner in the car on the way home. That was extraordinarily frustrating. You can see Meredith is still laughing at me. She <laughs> she thought it was the funniest thing ever. I didn't think it was so funny at the time. Um, and so last night was fine. This morning was a totally different story. I cried like a baby this morning. I was so stressed out. Um, I didn't know what to do. I was sitting there. I was telling Meredith. I was like, I, I don't think I'm ready for this. You know, I'm not ready... I go, I don't feel like I'm ready for this kind of stuff. And I just felt overwhelmed. And so she told me, who are you to say that you're not ready? Um, who, who am I to say that I know what's best for, for my life? And so for what we talked about is, you know, that God is in control and, you know, the Lord is leading me. And um, if today's my time, then then it's my time. And if you know, I shot 82 today. You know, somehow I was going to use it for his glory. And, um, gosh, it was a long morning. <laughs> it was long. Did you calm down at any point? I think when um, she made me some more food, had a big breakfast, 
my stomach has been hurting for like two days straight. Um, and so I, I would say I calmed down when I got to the course. You know, right when I got to the, the training room and started working with with Troy, I was I was pretty calm. Doug? Danny, why do you think that happened? Why do you think you felt that way? Thought what way? Uh, how you did this morning. I think because it's the Masters. Um, I've... <laughs> I've dreamed of having a chance to play in this golf tournament. I, I teared up the first time I got my invitation in the mail. Um, we we were fortunate enough to play here in college, and you know I love this place. I love this golf course. Um, and there's just, you know, if you're going to choose a golf tournament to win, this would be the tournament I would want to win. And you don't know how many chances you're going to get. And so having a chance, you know, if I think I had a five shot lead on Friday and then a three shot lead going into today, I don't know if you get better opportunities than that and so you don't want to waste them and you know as the human condition is just to to make things bigger than they really are and you know years from now I would say people may not remember me as a champion and that's fine but in the moment you think it's a lot bigger deal than it really is I suppose I asked because as as we watch you over the last four days I don't know if anyone could have suspected that you your stomach was hurting you looked the model of of cooling and and confidence out there were you faking us out? Yeah, maybe I should play more poker or something. <laughs> no, I, I, I truly, I, I felt peace when I'm on the golf course. I think the hardest stuff is off the golf course. When I'm, when I'm out there and once we get into the round, pretty much after par in the first hole, I was settled in. I felt good. Um, does that mean my stomach's going to feel any better? You know, I remember when I was in college, I used to, I, I played in a couple U.S. Opens, and we all, I always used to have indigestion like the week and a half leading up to it, and that's just how it was. You know, my dad's sitting there. I don't remember the pills I was supposed to take, but um, it was weird. I my I guess I don't have a good stomach. I, I couldn't tell you why, but, you know, it's something I'm used to. Ignacio. Uh, congratulations, Scotty. I heard you are a religious man. Uh, did your faith... Uh, play a significant part in this victory? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. You know, like I said earlier, what, what Meredith told me this morning is, you know, that, that we're not in control of our lives. And so I, I spoke a little bit about, you know, what, what playing golf for me is like and, and why I do it. And, um, you know, I mean, my faith affects all aspects of my life, you know, not just my life on the golf course. And so, you know, the Lord has given me a, a skill and I'm trying to use it for his glory. And, you know, outside of that, I'm just out here trying to do my best. David. Yeah, uh, Scotty, recent major winners such as John, Ron, Bryson, JT have talked about the influence of Tiger on their game, whether it was influencing how they play or inspiration. Wondered if you were uh, similarly influenced by him. Oh, yeah. Um, I play Tiger's irons, I wear his shoes, wore a shirt this week. <laughs> um, yeah, I, Tiger on the golf course is just ridiculous. Um, he's done so much for the game of golf, and, you know, I, I spoke about it a little bit at the beginning of the week. Um, we're so glad to have him back out here. You know, he is the needle for the game of golf. He has completely changed the PGA Tour from when he came on 25 years ago or maybe just 26 now. Um, and his YouTube clips are just such an inspiration for me. Um, I remember watching him, the highlights of him winning in 97, kind of running away with it. And he never really broke his concentration. That's something that I reminded myself of today. You know, I tried not to look up. I tried to keep my head down and just keep doing what I was doing because I didn't want to break my concentration. You, the minute I did was on 18 green when I finally got on there and I have, you know, a five shot lead. And I'm like, all right, look, now I can enjoy this. And you saw the results of that. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Tiger. Yeah. Ian. Hey, Scotty, uh, obviously you've won three times in the last couple of months. You had big Ryder Cup moments. I'm just curious if you've ever on a Sunday morning gotten that emotional where you were crying before some some big Sunday afternoon was about to unfold, or is this the first time that happened to you? This is the first time. Um, I think it's different being with the lead, and it's definitely different with it being a major, and especially the Masters. And so this golf course and this tournament is, is just different. Grant? 
On a scale of one to 10, how good was your chip shot on number one? And then on 15, how much clearance on your second shot? And then the, uh, how many more rolls of the ball did you have before it got scary going down the, <laughs> the hill on 15? Um, number one was probably nine out of 10, little bump into that hill and then trickling it down there and you know basically to you know kick in range. Definitely settled me in for the day because didn't hit a good tee shot, hit a fantastic shot out of the trees, just hit a little too hard. Um, and then the chip shot on 15, we talked about a couple different things. You know, the approach shot, we, I was walking up to, or right when we got off the tee, I was like, go for it, Teddy. And he's like, let's see where it is. You know, I hammered that drive. And I, I didn't expect it to be over there behind the trees. But with the way the lie was, and I only had a five iron, and so it's kind of like, you know, it's a five iron. I'm just trying to hit it in that right bunker. And, you know, if I push it, it goes in the crowd. If I pull it, it'll go on the green. And to us, it seemed like the safest play at the time. And so that's what we did. And, you know, I hit a really good shot. I had to start it probably right edge of the bunker. Those trees were probably in line with the middle of the bunker, the ones right in front of me. And then, you know, after that, just trying to execute. You know, I felt like, you know, once again, just trusted Teddy. And, you know, we were walking down, seeing the layup. I just told him, I was like, hey, man, thanks for that. I really don't want to hit this wedge shot right now. <laughs> this thing looks scary. <laughs>